they may have a specific threat against an embassy and they don't want to reveal that they know it, or they may have an even larger threat, which is simultaneous embassies. Charles, what do you make of this very unusual decision to close 21 embassies and consulates, and you can see there on the map in 17 countries across the Middle East, North Africa, Asia, and now the State Department issuing a worldwide travel alert through August. What does it say to you about the state of Al Qaeda? Well, it tells us a lot about the state of the one of the great um, policy initiatives launched by the president when he entered the presidency. He made the tour to Ankara, Istanbul, to Cairo, to Indonesia, in which he opened his hand and he, he called for a new era of mutual respect with the Muslim world. Now, this is a product of it. Four years later, we have this unprecedented shutting of embassies. Remember, there's no need to shut down U.S. embassies in Christian lands. Already is closed. This is only in the Muslim world. Obama had assumed that because of his history, uh, growing up in Indonesia because of the sentiment he had towards Islam, because of his silver tongue, and because he was denouncing abroad all things having to do with Bush, that America would, uh, as Obama has been saying, its standing of the world is at a new high. It's at a rather low when we have to close our embassies, unprecedented closings ar around the Muslim world. Uh, I'm not second-guessing the call. We obviously have a lot of chatter, as they say. But it tells you the wreckage that is the foreign policy. You add that on to the reset with Russia and the humiliation with Snowden, and add on to that the open hand with Iran and the rejection time and again contemptuously for all Obama initiatives, and you've got a foreign policy in shambles. And you mentioned Benghazi. Let's talk a little bit about that because there have been some developments there. Fox News is reporting at least five CIA officers, employees, have been uh, made to sign non-disclosure agreements, what are called NDAs, that they can't talk since the Benghazi attack. And CNN is reporting that some CIA workers are being forced to take monthly lie detector tests. Charles, what do you make of all that? Well, we have to distinguish two subjects. If this is about not talking about what the CIA was doing secretly, in that annex, and who knows what the operation was. It's understandable, but they should allow the CIA agents to speak with the authorized individuals and committees in Congress. If, however, it's about the night of the attack in Benghazi, which ought not be hidden, ought not be secret, and I think the American people deserve to know about, then this is a scandal, then this is a cover-up, then this is a stonewall, and we have to know if the non-disclosure agreements and the pressure on these people who were there at the time of the attack is one or the other. If it's the second, we have a real story here. They said, will members of Congress be in the exchanges? Yes, members of Congress will be in the exchanges, and their staffs may, uh, must enroll in health marketplaces uh, as the Affordable Care Act requires. It's the same. I don't think it's really that much different than in terms of what's being paid into their current health insurance, is it? I mean, it's it's just they're they're now just going to have Obamacare, and I think they may have not as good of care as they currently have. They've sort of always been known for having the best care around, but but I, I do think it's important that the leaders have the same health care that. Is basically been passed for everybody else. Charles. But it's not really. The egalitarian veneer is a phony here. If you're a normal American and you, you join the exchange, you get a subsidy only if you're needy. Here, you're, you're, you're getting a subsidy because you are privileged. You're a member of the congressional staff or of Congress. So, regardless of need, the feds are going to pay about 70% of your premium. It doesn't happen if you're an ordinary American. So even though Pelosi had it sound as if it was equality, it's not at all. All right. New jobs numbers out for today for the month of July. Let's take a look at them. Uh, 162,000 jobs created in July. Unemployment dropped to 7.4 percent, which is the lowest in four and a half years. Uh, the 162,000 jobs created, kind of disappointing, kind of a mixed picture. It's a recovery, but it's a very slow, stalled recovery. Charles? It's pushing on empty. This is the same old stuff, a weak recovery, weak jobs. The reason that there was a tick down in the unemployment rate was because of about half a million people 
who got discouraged and aren't even in the workforce, and a huge increase in part-time employment, which is one of the casualties of Obamacare. Winners and losers of the week. Charles. The loser is a man who thinks he's a winner, Edward Snowden. He got asylum, but his hell is just now beginning. He's going to learn what it's like to live under the rule of law in the Republic of uh, Putin. He won't like it. He will never be out of the eyesight of a KGB agent. The winner of the week is Sharknado, which is an internet and cable TV sensation, which it's the Lawrence of Arabia of <laughs> terrible movies. And tonight it goes into theatrical release for one night only. So if you miss Planet Nine from Outer Space, wallow in this at your, your Simple yes or no question. Did you watch Sharknado when it was on cable TV? Of course not. <laughs> well, my, I don't think it's so... Uh, all, so uh, <laughs> all my knowledge of pop culture is third hand from my son. <laughs>